Marion, good morning. Good morning, Neil. Sorry, no, my voice isn't great. I hope you can understand me. I can understand every single word. You're a little bit hoarse, but that's fine. But, uh, you know, here we are, record, record, re- recalling barbaric times in our history. Yeah. Absolutely horrendous. And and you went through you went uh, you went through a bit the Besbra network, didn't you? I did. I was actually wasn't in Besbra for long, but um, in my case, um, I was locked up in my own house with the help of certain nuns. At home. Uh, at home, yeah. As in, don't go out. Someone will see your bump at home. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Um, I'd say I was about I was twenty weeks when my parents were told and I You was, told them, is it? No, I didn't tell them, I was terrified. I went to a teacher and she brought me to a nun who was a friend of the family. Now in fairness, this nun was actually a nice person. And she sent for my parents and they were told and I was brought home and that was it. I was up in my bedroom for the rest of the pregnancy. And did they tell you why you were confined to the bedroom? Because nobody was told that I was pregnant. And nobody was to be told. And I had one friend who was told. No, people knew. People knew. They weren't fools. But um Was it out of was it out of embarrassment? Was it out of shame? Was it out of social um, That confuses me. Um it was out of shame, I suppose, and but it confuses me because I did have there had been other little babies born in our family who my grandmother, God rest her soul, brought home and reared. Her plate was. Wasn't she, wasn't she a forward thinking woman? Pardon? Wasn't she a very modern thinking woman? She was a great woman. She didn't care what people thought it. No, she was a fantastic woman, yeah. Yeah. Well, anybody that came through the War of Independence and Civil War and had uh, relations in her life that remembered the famine, you know, they would be independent women, I'd say. You know? Oh, she was, she was a star. But unfortunately, she died a year before my baby was born, so... Were you in school at the time, then? No, I was finished school. Were you? I'm just trying to estimate, would you have been about 17 or 18? I was 17 when I got pregnant, yeah. Okay. And then, and then when it came close to, to date, did you spend some time in Besborough? Uh, what actually happened was I was reared in a, in a public house in Cork and the customers used to have to come through the private part of the house, so I'd have to be left upstairs all day. Um, for months? Yeah, about four, four, four and a half months, I'd say. Did you ever come out at all? Out of the house? All right, none from St. Finbar's used to come in a taxi once a month and take me to see the gynaecologist. But that was um, the only time you got out of that room was yeah. to go to... So you were, yeah. you were, you were imprisoned. Did they, your meals brought up to you? And things like My that? meals were brought up to me. I was allowed downstairs at night after the, the bar closed. And were your and parents... And brought me out, as I say, once a month to yeah. see the gynaecologist in a taxi and brought me back with the holy hour that time. So I had to be done between half two and half three, and I was brought back. Snuck out? Snuck out and snuck back. But you say, in spite of that, people knew, you say, is it? Oh, yeah. Everybody was told I had a tumour. God bless the mark. But they knew? Well, I would think so, yeah. And were your, were your, were your parents kind to you through all of that? I mean, it's not kind the circumstances where you were trapped in a bedroom, but or were they critical of you? Um, Maybe they didn't I wouldn't talk say about they were critical. Uh, it was just a very cold time in my life, like, and I certainly didn't expect what was going to happen at the end. I was very naive. I actually thought I was going to have a baby at the end of this, like. Can you hold that thought until after 11? Are you in a position yeah, to sure. hold on? Okay, thank you so much for that. Text 0868104106. Oh, so need. when you went when you went into labour, then. Um, Close to to the birth, you were you were then moved from the bedroom, was it? I was no. I the the gynecologist in question at the time, um, that with obviously the the permission of my parents decided that the baby was going to be born a month early. Were you induced? I was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know why that was? Because there was a relation coming home from England, and it had to be done and dusted. Before she, before she came. Extraordinary. Yeah. Were you told that at the time? 
I was told I was going in early, yeah, that the baby was going to be born. So did you go directly from over the pub into St. Yeah. Finbar's, was it? I did, yeah. Okay. And they did the usual. They put me on a drip and it was absolutely horrendous. Something I'll never forget. The labour? Mm. Um, I'll never forget it until the day I die. I, like, I can remember pulling drips out of my hands and there was blood all over the beds and like the nurses were looking at me, like the staff nurses were looking at me. They, they saw what I was going through. Forgive and me now, but the, forgive me now. I, I, I don't know, that's why I ask. Is there no painkillers involved in any of this? Well, I certainly felt pain anyway. I can tell you they probably gave me something, but it didn't work. No epidural or anything like that? Oh, God, no. No. Not at all. That wasn't her job in my time. So a long um, and painful labour that resulted it was in the horrendous. Birth. They just kept pumping the drip into me. Absolutely horrendous. And that was in St. Finbar's sack. Baby was born? Baby was born, a little boy. Um, he was born at about 20 to 2 in the morning, I think. Right. Um, conscious for this and everything? Yeah. Did you get to hold him and spend time with him? No. no, no. What actually happened was, no, I didn't. Um, he was taken away. And about 10 to 8 that morning, there was an, an ambulance called. I was put into the ambulance and the baby was put into my arms. Uh, there was another girl in the ambulance with me with her baby. I think she was keeping her baby, God bless him. And I was taken to Besborough and I was, with all due respects to the listeners, I was in an awful condition. I had, like, I was incapable of walking or talking or I couldn't hardly see. My eyes were so red from bloodshot. And they... Can I just stop you for a moment there? I, you know, back to St. Finbar's and the baby's born, yeah. your son is born. Would there been any family there to, to be with no. you or to talk with you? Or, even no. in the morning, the next morning, was there any family no. there? No, your parents no. weren't there? No, I was on my own. And was it your understanding as you held the baby in your arms as you headed to Bellsborough and the ambulance with the other young girl that you were going to be keeping your son? Um, I suppose, Neil, I knew then. I knew then that he was going to be taken, but I didn't realise that once the door of the ambulance opened, that this nun was going to take, she put out her arms and took the child. You and thought she was putting her arms out to help you out, I think. I right? did, I did. Yeah. And she just turned on her heels and walked away. So whipped him off you and off she went, yeah. marched off? Yeah. Uh, and how did, you, how did you react to that? I didn't know... I, I don't know how I reacted. I think I was in I was in another world, I'd say. I didn't know I didn't know how to react. I was just in complete shock after the experience I I had. And then this happened and I was hushed up to a bedroom upstairs with um into a room on my own. And they just put a bedpan next to me and walked off and left me there in a cruel condition. Child was downstairs in a nursery, so I believe. And I was upstairs and a girl would come up and give me something to eat. I was only there a couple of days. Um, a nun would pop in. I remember coming in one day and saying, we need a name for your baby. And he was born on a Tuesday. And I was... I loved St. Anthony, so I called him Anthony. But obviously, that was changed. And uh, I was taken out of it a few days later. I believe I was I had to be bought out. I think you had to be bought out that time. As in your parents had to pay money? I think so, yeah. Like you don't know, you just think that that was... I, well, that was, that was the story of the time. It's like that anybody that was in Vespera... I could be corrected on this. Anybody that was in Vespera had to be bought out. So after you left the back of the ambulance and the nun whipped the baby away and you were brought up to this room on your own and the baby went to um, the nursery, you never saw Anthony again? I 
found him. Okay, but uh, the, the, that time? No, no, no. I didn't say no. He okay. was gone. And you went back home, your parents collected you and took you home? Yeah. Right, okay. And my was parents are my friend at the time. She's in England now. Yeah, and were people kind to you? Um, it wasn't really spoken wasn't, about. It wasn't talked about. Okay. Yeah. And, and your subsequent years then, how, how did you manage after all of this? Uh, very badly. Right. Very, very badly. Um, well, I suppose I'm put, let, I'm put myself down there, all things considered. Did you settle no, I down? Did, I, did didn't you manage, I didn't manage well at all, no, no. I didn't. Psychologically? Very bad. Yeah. Chronic alcoholic. Never got over it? Never got over it. I'm still... I'm still I still haven't got over it. Like you so, never get over the loss of a child. You didn't sign any papers or anything like that. Or? Well, I did, um, which I don't. I have no recollection of signing the first paper. It was only years and years later when we could get our some of our some of our papers from under the Freedom of Information Act that I got a few bits and pieces of paper, and um, I got a copy of. I was taken six weeks later over to the South Mile to a solicitor slash peace commissioner and I was just told to sign this form and I was terrified when I signed it. I actually thought it was the first form but when I got my papers, some of them, my papers back from the from Tusla. Tusla, yeah. What was, the, what was the form you had signed? I signed the first paper the day he was born. Releasing him, is it? Yeah, and I have no recollection of that. Do you think you didn't sign it? I, I'm i not sure, yeah, okay. to be honest. Nate, it, okay. my, it, the signature, there's something not right about the well, signature. Well, just the second call this morning now from a, from a woman who was a young girl at the time who doesn't recall, she says that her, her and says that her signature was forged. Yeah, or yeah. I, I was drugged. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. But the second one then, the one that I thought was the first one was six weeks later. In the mouth. Yeah, no. And, if you add up the weeks, six weeks would have been September. And the date, if there is a date down, uh, the, I think it's the 26th of September. But that's crossed out and they put in a date in December okay, to make so it look like I signed that paper in December that I had all that length of time to make my mind up. Yeah, it doesn't make, it doesn't, it doesn't add up to you. It's not illegal. So you would have been 18 at that stage then. And what, 18, of, yeah. what of the rest of your life? Did you go on to fall in love, um, have children? I did. I got married and I had, um, I had a son. And the role of the, of the man that you were pregnant by? Uh, Never he... knew. Sure, he must have known if you were... Uh, he didn't. No? He didn't. My mother came in and threw it at me. Well, I got married and I had... Three children. Um, I had a son and two daughters. They're adults, no grown adults, and they probably kill me enough coming on the radio. They won't. Um, they won't. Uh, I told my older two children there was ten years between my second daughter and my my second child, my third child. There were two girls, but there was only twelve months between the first two. So I told them about the situation when they were of age I, they were around 12 11 and 12 but in the meantime I had kept going up and down to and um, looking for information my sister one sister in particular was very good she kept going up and down and she, they cried their eyes out the night she was born like, um, and couldn't get information they told me until he was 18 yeah but I kept it up, I kept going up and down and up and down and eventually I got a phone call one day that they had a photograph for me and I tore the road down to Bessbury, I got the photograph, he was like the image of me. Um, you had a photograph of Anthony? I got a photograph, his mother, God rest her soul, had sent a photograph on, his adoptive mum sent right. out a photograph. Right. And uh, eventually, 26 years later, I was getting nowhere, and a friend of mine 
who was adopted himself gave me the name of a woman in Dublin and I phoned her and within 24 hours she had all my son's information. And had he been looking for you, do you know? No. No. I, I, he hadn't been looking for me, no, but I, I had, she gave me all his information. She gave me his, where he was living, his phone number. And I found him and he came down to Cork to meet me. He came down the second time. Our first meeting was obviously all questions and I explained to him what happened and I thought it went well, even though it was unbelievably emotional. And then he came down the second time um, and he met my older son and daughter. The youngest one was too small, she was only a little baby. And he said, that was it, he wanted to leave it at that. So I was broken hearted and it took years and years after before we had contact again. But we, we do have contact. And he, I, he has two children, and I met his adoptive father, and but it was hard work. And when did the drink take hold of you? Then was that in the earlier straight days? Straight away. It's well, earlier. not straight away. No, not straight away. Um, I started drinking after he was born, obviously, and it wasn't alcoholic drinking or anything like that. Well, I suppose I was drinking to blot, blot out the pain because I wasn't allowed outside the door for a year. And I got married, had two children, wasn't drinking, and then the drinking started. And I liked the effect, took away the pain, and it took off from there, and not alone was my life a mess. It was my husband's, my children's. Everybody's lives were a mess. you turned it around though? I turned it around Neil, for nearly 18 years and I went back out after 18 years and it was the worst thing that ever happened to me. You drank again is it? After 18 years yeah. Mm. And when they say it, get worse, it gets worse believe me it does. It absolutely destroyed my life and has destroyed my life. But you still have a loving family though? I mean, oh they're absolutely amazing. Amazing. I mean, I'm not drinking at the moment, you know. Yeah. Cause, uh, up to recently, it has been pretty horrible. You just need to keep on fighting, keep on trying, oh, yeah, keep I on picking do. yourself uh, up, no matter, no matter how many times you fall. You know what no, I mean? I, but hopefully, now there'll be no more falling. Yeah, because it's the it's the effort that counts. Yeah, and like I was afraid to come on the radio because I'd want to be upset with my family, you know. But at the same time. This is the one thing that has held me back my whole life. And I did go public before I went public mm. at our first commemoration in Besborough. And uh, that was very upsetting. But it's the one thing that has wiped my life out and it, like the truth has to come out. If, if it only was different back then where it would have been viewed as a joyous occasion regardless yeah. of the circumstances, it's a new life, you know, nobody yeah. died, no, no, like no, no criminality, it's a baby, yeah. welcome in the world in a happy family environment. You know, I hate saying this, but wouldn't your life have been totally different? Completely. Completely. Yeah. See, I had no rights, like, I, had no, I was told I was under 21. I wonder were your parents racked by guilt though in subsequent years? Um, oh yes, I think so, definitely. Definitely. I was just told I was under 21, I had no right to, to do what I was told. Yeah, yeah. There was, no, there was, was no chance 21. of you settling, there was no settling down with the man at that stage, you were too young or... No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. But well, like I have a fabulous husband, you know, and... We have to have our ups and downs, and we'd, we've been through terrible, terrible rough times, and so have my kids. And I have amazing grandchildren. My, my three children are, they went on to do amazing things with their lives. And that's all credit to them. 
uh, I'm very proud of them, you know. Yeah, and all credit to you as well because you haven't given up trying, you know. You haven't given up trying to change or make things better, and you know, like you know, it's easy for us to say, but forget about the past. That's a, that's another planet. That's history. You know, it's today that matters. Oh, I know, uh-huh. I know, and I know that too. But it's just you know, I know. Tomorrow doesn't even matter. It's today that matters yeah. now. Oh, I know that. It's just that I feel, you know, and it's, her courage is amazing, like. Yeah, and so is yours. And your family will be very proud of this conversation. And I hope so. I hope they won't kill me. Not at all, not at all. They give you a great big hug, as I would do if you were here. Thanks for taking my call, Marion. I wish welcome, you Neil. all the and best. I wish everybody well. All right, and I hope they leave those. I hope something is done about the babies and all the bodies that are buried down that evil hole. I know. Thank you for thank you for sharing. Much obliged. Thanks, Neil. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye. God bless. Have a good day. You too.